welcome back to Scott Wonders World. Fresh haircut. So the Euros are underway, um, and coming this Friday uh, on this channel, 7:30 p.m., a live watch along of Scotland versus England from Wembley. Obviously, one of the biggest um, rivalries in um, international sport. Um, uh, so there's me um, and my two good friends, Chris the Butcher and Blue Van Man Dave, uh, going to do a live watch along of the game, and we're also going to be drinking. Fuck fast. What could go wrong? You know, Dave will just sit here shouting at the the, the um the telly, well not here, but in his house, uh, for an hour and thirty minutes. Chris, be off his mind on um the buck fast. Uh, so yeah, come and join us. Um, should be a laugh. Um, and let's see if better team wins. Um, obviously, I mean, I'm I'm rooting for England, but we've got Scottish friends, Tommy McAllister, and other people as well. So I'm um, really looking forward to the game. Really looking forward to the evening, and it should be good fun. In the meantime, um, I messaged um, Chris and Dave over the weekend saying, how about, as a bit of fun, um, to lead up to that, we each draw up our all-time uh, England eleven, um, and see how they differ um, from each other. Obviously, broadly the same age. I think Chris is 45, I'm uh, 44, I'm 45. Just about 10, 30, uh, 46. And Dave, I think, is 52. So, all within the same sort of um, era, football-wise. Um, we, we came up with one more. So, we're going to do the, um, our England, our personal England 11 um, over a, 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 a time. But what we're not going to do is we, we've come up with one rule. And that rule is... Um, it can only be players that were in your lifetime. So, obviously, I wasn't alive when England won the World Cup, so I can't have Bobby Moore or Jack um, or Bobby Charlton or um, Jeff Hurst, Alan Ball, anybody like that. So, me personally, I've gone from the era of when I first actually started watching sort of England football, which is 1986, so the Mexico 86 World Cup. And I've gone from there, 86, to the present day. Uh, so that's where the, the spectrum is at. So people saying, oh, you should have had Bobby Moore. That's not what we're doing. It's a, 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 the era of while we've been watching football. Um, also, uh, the biggest problem I had, um, and what, we have, what we've done is we haven't compared notes. So I don't know who Dave have picked and who Chris has picked, and they don't know who each other's picked as well. These are all going to go out at the same time at 11 o'clock on Wednesday morning. Um, so interested, <clears throat> excuse me, what the guys have picked, who the guys have picked. Um, and the formation. The formation for me was one of the biggest issues. Um, fitting everybody in that I wanted to get in, uh, and it's been it's been quite interesting. It's been good fun actually. I know I know the, the other guys have enjoyed it. So go and watch their what they say um, and, and their England 11s as well, because I think it's been it's been a really interesting um, little exercise. So. Formation-wise, um, I know England are still generally still walks a four-four-two. Certainly over the years, I've actually gone for three-four-one-two, so a three-five-two um, formation. Uh, really big decision to begin with was goalkeeper. Um, in my generation, um, two goalkeepers stand out: Peter Shilton and David Seaman. Uh, I went, although um, David Seaman actually has a higher um, percentage of clean sheets for England. So he played 75 games and had 40 um, clean sheets. Peter Shilton had, he was a legend, 125 games at Caps for England with 66 clean sheets. So about 50%, whereas obviously Seaman's was higher. I went for Peter Shilton, uh, who was the most capped England player for many, many years. And he was one of my heroes when I grew up. So I, actually, I, I could not not go for Peter Shilton. In my back three, um, I've gone for two absolute warriors and a bit of finesse. Uh, so the first one is the finesse, and I went for Rio Ferdinand. 81 caps for England, just a solid, solid player. Very skillful um, and just could bring the ball out, could play the ball. Scored a couple of goals as well in his time. So he was, for me, I, I am denied between him and, um, and um, Sol Campbell but ultimately went for Rio Ferdinand. Uh, in the middle of the part, in the middle of that back three, I've gone for a man that if a man of my age would um, would fully, fully appreciate, was Terry Butcher. 
Now, anybody that remembers Terry Butcher's soap, um, red um, uh, blood spilled on his um, uh, white uh, headband, just covered in blood. And I think in, in international football, you need someone that's going to be a warrior for your for your team. And Terry Butcher, 77 caps for England, um, just epitomises, for me, what the old bulldog spirit was about. Uh, just never give up, never say die. The third man I've picked in that back three... Um, Another great player, but he used to get called a donkey, and he all, all but say he all gets a bit umpy. It's Tony Adams again, another man that would be in the trenches for you in that back three. Give everything, come out sweating, blood. Um, underrated as a footballer, man, ma manager at Pompey for a little bit, um, and I, I just I think that back, that back four with Shilton in goal is as steady as anything that you probably see. Um, there are a couple of others that I could have put in there. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. Um, who did I have down? Uh, Gary Neville, if I'd have had a back four. Um, Stuart Pearce, who was a phenomenal player. Um, Des Walker. Um, Kenny Sansom um, from, from yesteryear. All great players. So, yeah, my, my defensive unit is Peter Shilton, um, Rio Ferdinand, Tony Adams, and Terry Butcher. I think that's a, a cracking unit. Um, across the um, the four, so I've got four in the middle and someone just playing just in front. Um, on the right hand side, it's got to be David Beckham, isn't it? Um, never my favourite player, uh, never my favourite sort of sports personality. But 115 caps for England. Oh, Tony Adams had 66. 115 caps for England, 17 goals. Um, just a legend, absolute legend, and. Um, Creates, uh, can work up and down the pitch, gets back, defends, um, scores goals, free kicks, passing ability, um, speaks for itself. The guy was, he was a machine and a very, very, very good player. Um, in the middle, I've got two players of similar style, but I think they would break everything up and give everything for your team. Number one, Brian Robson. Um, again, not a massive fan of Brian Robson as a, as a, as a, um, a domestic player for Manchester United or as a man, but would give everything. 90 caps for England, 26 goals, um, and would Captain Marvel, they used to call him, and was just an absolute, a gun, again, a machine. Um, chipped in with some goals, great um, uh, playmaker as well, but would give everything for his team. Um, and next to him is a man that's broadly the same thing, Paul Ince, the governor. Um, just Again, covered in blood, would give everything for England, for any team you played for. Um, and I think you need people in, in your team and the park that are going to give everything for your country. And I think those two would break everything up and distribute the ball to either Beckham or the two other guys I'm about to mention to, um, to bring forward the game. And uh, just, they're destroyers in the middle of the pitch for me. Destroy and distribute. Um, again, Paul Ince, 53 caps, two goals. It, it speaks for itself, but the stats don't actually do what a player he was as justice, I don't think. The left-hand side caused me an issue. Um, I went with, I was stuck between three names, actually. Um, and I was going to put John Barnes in. Um, I was going to put Paul Scholes on. But ultimately, I went with Steven Gerrard. Um, again, a man that's going to give everything. Uh, as would Paul Scholes, to be fair. Barnes was a bit of an enigma, fantastic player, but didn't always um, give his all, not always at least all. Never played the best for England. Um, Steven Gerrard, 141, uh, 114 caps, 21 goals. Um, just, again, he would give everything for that team. He can break up the play, he can play, he can play, he score goals, free kicks, penalties, corners, all that sort of stuff. So, and he would, I think that, that line across the, the middle of the pitch, um, would give a really nice balance and help out the three people that I've got in front of them. Just in front of them, playing in that pocket, is a man that's probably the most gifted player that's ever played for England. Absolute nutcase, but a phenomenal player. Paul Gascoigne. Uh, 57 caps, 10 goals. Should have had more. Um, I should have had more goals. Um, Gaza. It, everything's been said about Gaza that needs to be said, really. Um, the man is an absolute... A, pff, an enigma, really, in in um, for England. Probably, I say, the gi most gifted player this country's ever ever produced. Just phenomenal, um, and I think him in front of that that four in midfield, just behind my two strikers, 
would would um, would give any um, on his top form um, would give any team in the world uh, a run for their money. And my two strikers um, again, quite a difficult decision. Um, I'm probably going to upset a few uh, with this one, uh, with these two. Sorry, because I've left out. There's no room um, room in my space in my team. Excuse me for Wayne Rooney. Um, I just for me, he never. I know he, he was in England's top scorer. It's, it was always something missing at international level. Um, it was like the press built him up, and um, yeah, I, I just was never a massive fan of Wayne Rooney. My first striker um, up front, 63 caps for England, 30 goals, Alan Shearer, um, a goal scoring machine at club level, and a very, very, very good international player. Um, I was always a massive fan of, um, of Alan Shearer. Just if you needed a goal, that man would pop up and get it. Uh, could do it all. A, a, an old traditional um, English number nine. Just a brilliant player. Um, and next to him, a man I can't stand personally. Uh, don't like his um, his political views or anything like that. But um, you can't deny uh, he was a fantastic player. 80 caps, 48 goals, Gary Lineker. Um, just a, 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 a monster of a player in that six-yard box. Knew where, the ball, knew, knew where the goal was. And obviously a, a goal every, every other game. Uh, for England is is a phenomenal stat, um, just brilliant. Um, so, yeah, and I, it, it was a toss up between him and Michael Owen, uh, who was a huge fan of Michael Owen, um, just a very very talented footballer. Um, so that's my England eleven: Pete Shilton, um, Rio Ferdinand, Tony Adams, Terry Butcher, David Beckham, Brian Robson, Paul Ince, Stephen Gerrard across the middle, Gaza in front of them, Alan Shearer and Gary Lineker up front. And then Chris came up with the idea of having five substitutes. So I've gone for um, goalkeeper, David Seaman. Uh, on the bit, uh, um, uh, defender, got to have a defender in there, I suppose. Um, I went for um, Kenny Sansom because the man was, was fantastic. Uh, Paul Scholes, um, Glenn Hoddle, another very, very gifted player, but I didn't think you could have him in the team as well as, as Paul Gascoigne at the same time, and Michael Owen. So yeah, that's that's my team. I'm gonna show it all over there as well, so hopefully you'll be able to see it all. Uh, we'll give them some breakdowns of the players as well. Um, so that's my team. I'm interested to know what your team, um, say th this uh, 86 to 2021, none of the, the newest players get into my team. Uh, there's no one good enough, I don't think. Um, so that's, our, that's my team. Um, do you agree, do you disagree? Let us know in the comments. I'm interested to see what team you'd put out out of the, the span that you've been watching England and, and football in general. Um, interested to go and have a watch um, uh, Blue Van Man, Dave's and Chris the Butchers to see what they've come up with because that'll be quite interesting as well. Um, and don't forget to join us on Friday, 7.30, Scotland Wonders World, uh, live watch along, uh, England versus Scotland. So me, Chris and Dave drinking Buckfast, which is a 15% uh, tonic wine. Uh, it's called... What do they call it? Um, some loose uh, moose, loose juice, or some wreck the hoose juice. Chris is gonna be dead thinking that. Um, so yeah, hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, really looking for, uh, really into the, um, the the Euros. Don't watch England a lot, <laughs> but as soon as something comes on, like the Euros, or the World Cup, I'm back in it again. I don't know what it is about um, English football, and international football. It just draws you in. So yeah, hope you've enjoyed the video. Join us on Friday. Um, have a good week and um, we'll see you soon.